Once upon a time, at the university in Hattiesburg, there was a professor who taught children's literature. She was extraordinarily dedicated to her students and desired that they examine original manuscripts and illustrations. She had this idea of starting a little collection of papers from authors and illustrators. And that was quite interesting because she would write letters in longhand uh, in hopes of getting them to reply in longhand, but asking them for bits and pieces of their work. Galleys, editorial notes, sketches, and she would always say, if it's something you're gonna throw away, send it to us. Um, if you've already thrown it away, send us the trash can. The first responders were Elmer and Berta Hader, who were Caldecott Award winners, and in that same year, H.A. Ray wrote a letter to Dr. de Grummond, and H.A. Um, Ray, who is the creator of Curious George, someone that we all know and have great affection for. She wrote as many as three and four hundred letters a month, longhand, to authors and illustrators. And as a result of that, the collection now has 1,300 authors and illustrators' works represented here in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And thus, the de Grummond Collection of Children's Literature came to be. Today, it's grown to one of North America's premier research centers and it's housed in the McCain Library and Archives on the USM campus. Everyone's first stop is the reading room where they study the huge variety of materials. And what materials are those? Let's start with the collection of books. This particular room, you know, it's comprised of PZs. And so um, you can find anything here that is um, a fairy tale, fiction. Um, we also have all of the golden books. And what made these so significant would be that front oh, part for those. a quarter. You know, mm -hmm. you could buy them in the grocery store. And it would be, this book belongs to. Mm -hmm. And that was really a significant move. You know, children's literature is one of the best ways to learn about the culture of a society at the time. And we'll be able to look back at this time period and see what, what was really um, significant. Well, let's move on and see some other stuff here that you've got. Okay. okay? There's also the manuscript room, which holds even more manuscripts and illustrations. Um, these, obviously, are Ezra Jack Keats' works, original illustrations that appeared in the book, The Snowy Day. It's, it's clearly an original because um, you can see where he's put a little red on the snow pile just to, you know, give it some depth. And, of course, there's Peter, the famous picture of Peter uh, sliding down the snowy hill. And you have all of Ezra Jack Keats. Yes, Keys, we everything. are the repository for Ezra Jack Keats. Well, these are other things that are just incredible. What else well, do you I have here? Well, I love this because Crockett Johnson was a creator of Harold and the Purple Crayon. Let's set it back down, yeah. So, um, you know, right there you can tell that that's an original illustration of Harold. Mm -hmm. Richard Scarry. Richard Scarry is a favorite among parents and children alike. But this is one of my favorite children's books. It's Caps for Sale that's by it. Esper Slobodkina. The exhibit room is in the Cook Library. Curious George watches over that display. And this is obviously the H.A. Ray corner. Um, and this is where George first appeared in a book titled Raffi and the Nine Monkeys. And then we've got some paste-ups, some pages that H.A. Ray himself did. And you can see that he used tape on these things and would put in different uh, just directions about how he wanted the book to look. H.A. Ray um, 
here you see a definite sense of whimsy. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was an amazing, amazing man of science and art. Kind of a renaissance man. Absolutely. More of your Keats originals. More Keats original. Um, all of those paint brushes were on Keats' desk. Of oh course. my goodness. So that came straight from Look at that. his desk. This is Louis. And here's the manuscript, and you can see his own editions. He was invented and painterly. You know, he was just Brilliant. incredible. And then these antique books you have over here? Yes, those are some of my favorite That's things. They're very there. early publications of children's books. This is uh, Kate Greenaway, most, I think, obviously. Mm -hmm. And it's the unfinished Greenaway. There's another Greenaway, an original Greenaway. It doesn't have yeah. that uh, little Victorian kind of feeling. We have a lot of early fairy tales illustrated by Walter Crane, who was one of the um, early illustrators with Kate Greenaway and Randolph Caldecott. So they were all contemporaries. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, I, I just find this whole thing amazing. It is. It's a remarkable treasure for the university, for the state, and for anybody who has a particular interest in children's literature. And it all started with a dream.